If you are writing a novel, a poetry book, or a nonfiction book, you need to go throw it in the trash right now because we've been manipulated, we've been programmed, we've been whipped into thinking that we are not living in the golden age of literature right now. There are thousands, millions of sad boys and sad girls mewing left and right right now and saying, no one wants to read my works. TikTok ruined the publishing industry. Leftist politics ruined everything. There's no readers anymore. And all that is is excuses, excuses, excuses. Because as a literary fiction author, as a poet, as a nonfiction author, there is no better time than right now to be successful as an author. And your success is guaranteed. And if you don't get it, then it is your fault. And I'm sorry, people. We've been programmed with this old mentality that tells us that publishing books is the cornerstone of becoming a successful and great author. And I agree that books are important. They're transformative. They build your legacy and reputation as an author. But when did we forget that writing is supposed to be a communication to another human being that's supposed to impact them in a certain way? When did we get into this postmodernist bullshit that forgot the origin of oral storytelling, which is to teach a lesson? Guys, what is teaching? What does teaching a lesson do? It transforms the other person. You're not doing art for art's sake. You're not showing everyone how smart you are. And right now, I'm going to blow your mind with a statistic that's going to back up everything I just said. And this is referring to Substack. Over 1,000 writers make over $100,000 a year annually, which is more six-figure authors than the big, big five publishers combined. The company is on track to more than double most of these metrics in 2024. Did you guys just hear that? And we were talking about one website. We're not adding in Ghost, Beehive, WordPress, and any other places where people post their writing. Substack alone has more authors working full-time with their writing than all the authors under the umbrella of the big five publishers. And so writing isn't about money. This channel is not about making money, but writing is about providing a message to other people. And this is a graphic from my free writing school, which is launching on October 14th. And I'm not, I, I get into it way more over there. But if you look at the bottom of the graphic, at the end of the funnel are books and your paid Substack or paid whatever. And people have to trust you and be comfortable with you and go through this funnel 99% of the time if they are going to purchase your book or subscribe to you on Substack or support you in whatever way. And so everyone is working on a novel. Everyone is working on a book. But how many of you guys are building trust? How many of you guys are building a free library of content and relationships with readers? And is there po a point of writing a book until you've done that? Because a book launch is supposed to be a beautiful thing. It's now turned into an event of misery where you post it online, tell your friends, a couple people buy it, and you get to wave your book around. But a book launch is supposed to be where you show all the people that you know and, that, and, and love you. This big thing that you've been working on, your big project, this legacy piece. It doesn't happen the other way. You don't get to wave your book around to an empty crowd and think that, that you've done something good. And then playing from behind and telling and trying to tell every, every person, hey, go read my book, go read my book. No one's going to do it. That's annoying, needy, and terrible. And so I'm not saying you need to get on a microphone and speak like I do. You don't. Most of those authors in that 1,000 plus pool on Substack that are six-figure authors don't sit and make YouTube videos. But almost all of them have a great relationship with their readers. And the ones that blew up and have built their audience from scratch, it, and they, the people do it every single day, communicate. And I understand that a lot of you guys are introverts, that a lot of you guys maybe have people problems, that maybe you aren't the most likable person in the world. And it's fun to point out me up here as the extrovert, but I wasn't always like this. I created and formed myself into this because there is a concept called 
character sculpting, which means that you don't have to be the same person forever. If you are an ugly, introverted person that people don't like, you can't change that overnight. But in three to five years, you can change that. And it won't just be good for your writing. It will be good for your life. You will be happier. And let me blow your mind again. Almost every single author behind me on that bookshelf was a social butterfly. There are exceptions. There are the outliers. But why are you trying to be the exception? Why are you trying to be the miserable outlier with no friends that dies alone? What the hell is wrong with you? What happened to you? Why have we accepted that as our reality? And it really is because of anonymity online that we all just have assumed this weak persona. And I'm not speaking from a high horse here because I was just there. There are levels to this game. And I was shielding myself from you guys for way too long because I just liked posting content and having no accountability with other human beings. And I was kind of turned off because I got like weird death threats sent to my email and some, some weirdo was sending letters to my house that had like veiled death threats. And I was like, Jesus Christ, all my writers are these weird people. But last May... I was having an existential crisis as an author because very soon I'm going to be releasing my poetry book titled Desert Orpheus. But I was sitting there with like my 65 poems or so and I was like, there's something missing here. And I feel like the poems are good. I feel like this is enough to publish into a book. I have an aud audience obviously to read it. But this feels all about me. And I tried to just be more introverted. I tried to lock myself in a room every day and write more poems. And some of them were good. And some of them are added into the collection now. But it still felt empty. And I was like, dude, if I wrote 100 more poems that were great, this still wouldn't feel complete. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put this on the back burner. And I'm going to make my total focus on interacting with my audience. And so every single day, I started talking to people just like you. I started doing a ton of different podcasts with channels that had 50 subscribers. I started emailing people, Zooming with people almost every single day. And one day I was talking with one of these individuals and his name is Alistair and he has a channel here on YouTube. He is a part of the literary renaissance and we were discussing translating poetry and we were having some fun and we were translating some poems together, just laughing our asses off, just so much fun. And then suddenly I realized, I said, I need to add Rilke's poetry to my book. My book is called Desert Orpheus. And I think Rilke is one of the best poets ever. If he may be the best and he is for sure in the top five. And he wrote a book called Sonnets to Orpheus. And so I decided to translate that entire collection and add it to my book. And now the book feels complete. And I've actually added a bunch of other collaborative elements to the book also, including poems from people other than myself and Rilke, because I thought, this isn't about me. This is about hopefully releasing a great product. This is about collaboration. It, it was crazy. And that one addition to my book is just one of like a hundred different things I've learned from starting to collaborate and speak to the people who are reading or watching my stuff. Because a book is a hollow event. When you write a book and you publish it, there, maybe you'll get some reviews on Amazon or something like that, but there is no direct response. But right now, if I publish writing on my Substack, people will comment. People will say, I like this. I didn't like this. I think you should change that. And I could sit and discuss with my audience or ask them questions and they can help me. I can get a vibe check. I can post certain things. I can post th a, a poem like this or a short story like this. And just judging on how people comment and how many people like it, or just by directly asking them, I can see how good it actually is instead of relying on my own objective judgment, which is flawed. And guys, it's really liberating, liberating to know what people want from you. And you don't have to follow that completely. But right now, you could do this and I could do this. You and I could come up with 20 short story ideas that are fire within an hour. It's not easy to come up with new ideas. It's the easiest part of writing. Novel ideas are a little bit harder because you have to carry that through if you're going to edit it for thousands of hours. But something that's 3,000 words, that's not the biggest deal in the world. And to go full time on Substack just requires you to have 1,000 people paying you $5 a month. But being a full-time self-published author, that would mean that you would need to sell 12,000 books every single year to reach that $60,000. Which one sounds easier? And what's funny is that if you work on one, you get the other. If you have a thousand fans on Substack that love your work, they will all buy your book. 
they will all leave a review and that will start to build momentum for your book writing career. But if you, let's say, for whatever reason, get really lucky and you sell 12,000 copies of your book on Amazon, the next year it's not going to sell 12,000 copies again. That was just a one-off. And only a handful of those people are going to go find you and subscribe to you somewhere else. And so we're doing everything wrong here. Back in the day, I mean, the whole model of get a few short stories published, publish a novel, it's all wonky now. And it's based on this idea that you just want to be a writer that has no connection with their audience. Because it doesn't matter how weird you are. There are a thousand people that you can find that align with your views. And it's liberating. Honestly, it's the most liberating thing in the world to know a platform like Substack supports free speech. There have been multiple incidents just in the last couple months where people have been canceled extremely bad. And Substack said to them, hey, we're not going to do anything to you. Keep going. Say whatever you want. And so for me personally, there are things that I know I shouldn't say if I want to get everyone to like me on YouTube and if I want to be like Benjamin McAvoy and be the king of booktube and just be this bland, generic person. But I don't care about any of that. I just speak authentically because I know that there are a thousand people who align with my views and they will help me reach the global audience of people that align with me. We all fantasize about having that book that becomes a bestseller. But instead, as an author in 2024, I want you to start fantasizing about meeting new people, about them supporting you absolutely, and, and you know the nice messages you're going to be getting, the things you're going to learn, the things you're going to teach them, the memory, memories you're going to make with them. I've met up with at least 10 people in Phoenix, Tucson, and Las Vegas since last May, since I started reaching out to people. That would have never have happened. I think in early August, I saw the movie Ghost Dog at a vintage movie theater in Tucson with two random YouTube subscribers that reached out to me who were in town for some business conference. And I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. It was, it was so fun. I got home at like 1 a.m. and had to go to work the next day and was so tired, but I didn't regret it at all. And what's crazy about this transformation that the Ian from May that was more like hiding myself and not communicating with my audience was a much different person than who I am now. Like in public at my job as a teacher, I carry myself different. Because when you know that people support you, when you know that you are a part of something, when you create your little pocket, because that's what the literary renaissance is, you guys. It is 50,000 of us going full time in our little zone. It's not this detached experience because that's where singularity happens. Because right now I have a whole group of people. When they talk about me, they can speak about me in, uh, in a personal level. Yeah, I've talked to him a bunch. I know Ian. I'm not some detached YouTuber or celebrity who's just trying to farm in views and brand deals to make it big or a writer trying to farm the big publishing deal or the professor job to be able to detach and not communicate with the audience. And when people hear through word of mouth that you are a cool individual, that you know the person that they know, you know how easy they are going to be to get into your movement, to go check out your stuff. That's how we reach out to people who aren't necessarily interested in writing because We've all been there before. You say, hey, have you read Blood Meridian, bro? And they're like, well, who, what is it about? It's about a bunch of scalp hunters. There's this guy, McCarthy. He was reclusive and he moved to Santa Fe. Like we've all given these long-winded explanations before. But what if you told someone, hey, you like poetry? You like Rupi Carr? Hey, my friend Ian just released a poetry book. He has a small YouTube channel. I'll give you my copy. You should check it out. I'll tell them what you think of it. Do you think they're going, what's the chance of them reading it? It's a lot higher than saying, hey, there's this crazy guy from Tucson who just released this book. You should read it. Start by building trust and goodwill with other people. That's the job of an artist. That's the job of a writer. Don't listen to history. Don't listen to all the negative Nancys that are going to show up in the comments and say, that's not what I'm doing. Okay. Well, then that means that you are missing out on an actual connection, memories, and transformation with other people and within yourself. And so that's why your book is not that important right now. Focus on making connections. Focus on putting out some content that those people like. Short stories, poems, even your first chapter of your novel. Like get people interested. Do it one person at a time. And if you want the strategies on how to do that, once again, my school course is going to tell you the four daily action steps that you need to take to get that done. Because I don't believe in hacks, gimmicks, or anything like that. I believe in trust and trust only. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for trusting me with your time. I believe in you. I believe in your work. I believe that if you stand behind your work 
and are confident about it and are open to others that you can attain your dreams as a writer. And it's insane to think that you may have a novel that's better than Blood and You may have a novel that's better than whatever you think the greatest novel is of all time. And your success may not be guaranteed if you just sit and send it to publishers and don't do anything else. And so I only wish you the best. Take whatever path you want. But the literary renaissance is going in that direction toward connection.